Hello, you beautiful listeners and all you poppers out there in the introverse. We are back again for another exciting episode of Cyber City, and we are approaching our season finale. Well, the first season finale of Cyber City. We're getting so close. And I know you're all waiting for that Battle of the Bands, and trust me, it's going to be worth it. (laughs) But today, we need to join back with another very important character who just doesn't understand just how important their role is in this entire story. Just their existence alone altered the course of my story in this game so much. Celestial, you said you were going off to meet Carla. Yes, I did. Now, it's funny. You were told to meet at this very quaint little coffee shop. This coffee shop is, is ran by the booby. She's a very, very old, old woman. She, she talks about the old country and things like such. It's just, booby, how old are you? And she just gives you the look of, don't ask such things, child. And she makes beautiful such treats that have never been seen by any other restaurant. Like she makes traditional desserts like baklava, Turkish delights, it, your traditional Eastern Eastern European desserts. And so, of course, she makes traditional Turkish coffee as well. So that's why her little quaint little coffee shop always has a line that's at least three miles long. When you get there, it, it's funny. They actually, you were already on the guest list. Um, it appears Grandma Grandma Booby, she has made sure to upgrade her security. You're let inside, and hmm, Carla's still not in control yet, and it's Kane sitting there with a little tiny cup of coffee. <sniffs> He takes a sip, he sees you, and he waves, and he goes, Celestial! Hi, Kane. Come, join me. On my way. I have news. Hmm? What some, news you got for me? So I have some very interesting things that have been happening in the past few hours, Celestial. So... Oh? For one... I real I didn't realize that the member of your party Alistair was someone who had actually been close to my life when I was much younger. Oh yeah. Two, two the number one solo who everyone thought was a myth is apparently on our side now and I'm not going to lie I've never been more terrified in my life being chased by the morning star. That was horrifying. Celestial? But I have something else that I think is going to blow your mind. Are you up for um, a little... Back in the day, when I was getting my education from the nomads, they told me that people would go to caves and they did this thing called spelunking. Are you up to go spelunking with me, Celestial? If this is a trick to try to get me in bed with you, I will kill you now. So what is spelunking, first of all, before I answer? It's actually, it's, I promise you, Celestial, it's just a term that was used for going into caves, that people in the old days. And look, I already have to deal with Carla's weird sexual tension that she puts on me because she was... I guess she had a thing for both Trevor and Alistair. So when I'm both around them now, it just feels really weird to me. It, so I, I'm not trying to stack any other weird things. Until I'm separated from my sister, I'm asexual. I want nothing to do with romance. Okay, okay. So it's... Um... It's an unfortunate issue I have to deal with. Well, sometimes people need help, and it's not actually help. Well, here's the thing. 
I found something deep under the city, deep under the down below. Okay. And I need your expertise because I didn't think that this was an actual human, but the thing blinked and blinked at me. Wait, not an actual human? Celestial. It. This thing that I saw, he looked like he was thousands of years old. Fascinating. And I have never felt such hate. Such malice. Well. Pointed in my direction. But. The uh, the thing that really scared the shit out of me, Celestial, hmm. is that I felt my fucking dad from it. What? Yeah, that's why I need your help. Huh. Don't worry, I promise I will protect you. Ain't no one gonna hurt you when, while you're with me, but... And then is... uh, Celestial uh, raises an eyebrow... But she's going to stay silent. <laughs> Kane just goes, Oh, it, look, I know I may look a little scrawny and everything, but I guarantee you, he opens his mouth, you see two glowing eyes. I guarantee you, my little friend in here isn't the only reason why I was quickly rising through the rankings of, of the solo rankings. Okay, false. I wasn't this, I wasn't. <laughs> I, I wasn't judging you for your statue. I know smaller people can be quite dangerous, as I am not exactly tall myself on my average height. <laughs> but what the hell is that in your mouth, and how are you able to talk without suffocating? This is what we call... This is what is called a cyber snake. It is a complex mechanism of living metal and nanites. It is the only one of its kind in existence that was made. This is what was called old superpowers technology. And the reason why I can communicate is that when the snake starts to form, my vocal cords become active in the snake mouth. Oh, that is amazing. Would, after we're all done, uh, what you said, spelunking, do you mind if I get a sample of that and study it? Oh, happily. You know, maybe when we're getting near the end of this, maybe you'll get lucky and you can see just how I ended up destroying Cyber City, I mean, Night City in the beginning. Because... I can guarantee you, you've never seen anything like this. Kane just... He kind of just has that thousand-yard stare, just remembering the horror he, horror he went through just a few years ago. And it's like screaming in the background of his mind. Exactly. Okay. Just, and so, <laughs> Kane looks at Celestia and goes, So, follow me. But bak- Baklava... She's gonna steal Baklava off of Kane's pain and pocket it. <laughs> oh, and Booby comes out. She she comes out in her in her babushka and she's holding a platter of baklava for you guys. And she puts it in a styrofoam container and goes, For you, my sweeties. Uh, thank Mwah. you, Bubby. She she gives you both kisses and sees you on your way. Come see me anytime, Bubby. <laughs> Though you are too good to your Bubby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bubby rocks. Now, this is where our fun begins. Because Kane decides that you must go on foot. So you're following. And he's leading you exactly the way you thought. You're led to the entrance to the down below. In my city, somebody has to operate all the pipes and repair the wiring and everything underneath the underground. So there's a sad few sad group of people that were called the down below and that's where they live they are the most unrepresented people in the entirety of cyber city 
as you're going down, but you see the people when they see Kane, you hear people going, It's Kane! Kane's come back! Children are running up, grabbing his hands as he swing does little swings with them, holding them. There's like one child on one leg, another one on his other leg. He's just buried underneath small children as he's walking through the down below. You see, the people are just a buzz with energy, and it's not just from seeing Cain. Something big has just happened recently, Celestial. And you hear the murmurs as you're walking through, and you hear them talking about, so we're really going to be doing it. It's finally time. Yeah, we can believe that nomad. I, Alistair... He won't steer us wrong. Down with Leonidas! And it's just growing murmur and murmurs. Kane just gets a big old grin on his face and just... That that son of a gun, he wasn't lying. He's really begun it. Hmm. Alright, we're here. Your approach to a massive crack in a wall. Now... At the same time, this crack looks like it would be organic for the rock formation, but at the same time, it's actually man-made. Because when you closely inspect it, you can see that it's smooth. So Les is going to use her bioscan to scan the area, see if she can pick up any anything that is organic but also unnatural. Oh. I forgot you had that, and this is very valuable, what you're about to unlock. Your scanners, they interact with another frequency, and that's when you just hear a... Lights of yellow and orange and red start to flash, and then that's when you see the crack... The rock build up, the calcium build up breaks away, and you see that what the crack was was two metal sliding doors that fully open. Okay. And you see, breaking away from this massive amount of calcium deposits is a console. And you pick up very, very old DNA traces. Of three people. And I mean, this is old. Old, 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 old. If I had to put a time frame, and this is going to be the part that you'll need to contain yourself for, Celestial, because your scanners are telling you this structure is 5,000 years old. the hell? How can something be this old? Kane is just... He's just shivering now. He's... Oh, God. I I don't understand what's going on. When I came through here, it's... I guess it's just because of how dark it was. I couldn't really see everything, but... I thought we were going deeper into a cave, but... This is an actual... Massive underground complex. Because Cain puts his hand to the ground, closes his eyes, and if you had any kind of receivers on your ears, he would you would be able to tell that he's releasing a very, very high-pitched ultrasonic sound because he's mapping the location right now with echolocation. Holy okay, out of uh, Out of character real fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I add that Celeste has bioluminescent eyes? Yes, you may. That, okay. makes, that makes complete sense. So, yes, you can eat. Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay. And that will be a freebie. Oh, thank you. Oh, no problem. So, 
your eyes are easily able to tell from the darkness and you see this structure is the best way to put it is this is alien yes this was made but the best way to put this is no man made this something non-human made this Your scanners are just going off because the materials that this massive complex is made of is not from this planet. Ooh. Oh yes, it's we're getting close. We're get, we're getting so close. We all. So, you're now I decided to give you a very fun ability for who you are. Celestial, because you're a med person. And I thought long and hard because I gave Dice a fun ability that he can activate three times per per season. Because of who you are and because of your med abilities, I'm giving you a special ability that your scanners can give you. Three times per season, you can initiate scene reconstructions. Oh, shit. Here's my question for you. Do you want to do that for the room yeah. that you just came from? Ooh. You will still have yeah. two more uses for this. So For this right. season, yes. So, uh, now allow me to paint what your scanners reveal to you. You see four individuals standing in this weird complex and yes they have humanoid figures but they are alien the best way to put it there's things just odd weird about the way their bodies bend at certain angles and one looks like he's wearing just a very elaborate suit of armor it ha- it's covered in skull skull de- just elegant skull decal it's his helmet's like um is like a is what you would describe from old picture books as like a dragon head that meets into the armor another one is very pale and sickly it's i mean just how gaunt and skinny he looks but well, it's just like, a, what the fuck is happening? What oh. all these things? Oh, That's what this, she's thinking. And, and then number three comes in the view. And you see that the best way to put this is, immediately all you think of is Grim Reaper. Because it just looks like a skeletal head wearing a, a long black robe and with what's best described as a scythe in his arms. She's going to look at uh, Kane and uh, tell him everything that she sees. Kane, you hear him clearly say, the four horsemen. It was true. The what men? You're continuing on. You're seeing the scene playing, and Kane's telling you now too. So, just to build up the anticipation of what's being revealed to you, Celestial, you see that there is one figure dead on the ground. And you can't even tell what he looks like. The figure that looks like the Reaper and the one wearing the armor take aggressive stance toward the one that looks sickly and gaunt. And then that's when the battle happens. And. It's terrifying because this sickly, very skinny figure just easily slaughters the two other companions. Holy shit! But then you see him grip his chest and then vomit some strange, viscous liquid out of its mouth, which you can assume must be its own blood. This thing is dying which makes it even more terrifying that this thing did this basically knocking on death's door
Now, it'll take some time, but thankfully, your scanners have made a copy of the language. It sounds like no language you ever heard because it just sounds like singing, the way they communicated to each other. It was a combination of lights and music. To give you an idea, this is how they communicate. So it'll take a while for your scanners to fully figure out what was being said during all of this. And then this is when Kane tells you. There were the nomads told me legends that a very long time ago men came from the sky. In ships that sailed the winds. They brought strange instruments with them. And then when it was time, the skymen left, but they left four individuals. And the legend goes that when we had become, when we had lost our way, the four horsemen of the apocalypse will set things right again. At what right? I. Well, she's asking, uh, Kane. You're getting, oh no, Kane's just like, from what I could gather, it's from what I was getting is that basically they were going to wipe everyone off the planet and, and start over with a new species. Well, but I don't, but this all I makes can't... sense now, because if you're saying that one of them betrayed all the other ones. Oh, you're going down farther, farther. You've gone so deep, and you can feel the gravity is actually even more intense now. And supporting you so you don't feel as heavy. And you finally reach the bottom. There's a light misting on the ground. And you see a column that extends all the way up to, into Cyber City. You see strange mechanizations. You that you that you're like what? And then it dawns on you. This is a life support machine. And from how large it is, the amount of power it would take for this, it has to be siphoning from the city. Which explains why there's so many slums in shitty parts of it, of Cyber City. Well, that's uh, capitalism, but. Kane looks and he goes, There it is. There. That. Thing. Kane points you in the direction, and that's when you see it. If you had to guess the height of it, it, it would be about 11 feet tall. It has a oh, very wow. long. It has a very long head, of what in height wise, it has a long head, but it's completely bald. Its eyes are completely white. It doesn't have a nose. It just has one slit for a nostril, but it's not two slits. It's only one, and then it has a lipless mouth. Its hands are massive. Just the size of those hands. And it doesn't have massive talons coming off. It just has little, small, little, sharpened little nails. But you can see the thickness of them. It's insane how thick these nails are. It's so skinny. And you can tell that there's no way to tell for an identifying way to tell what sex it is. And then that's when your eyes goes back to the torso. And you see what clearly looks like to be 
a scar from open heart surgery. Oh. Yes, yeah, so let's uh, scan the creature. Yes, you can. Yeah, she's going to uh, scan the creature to see if there's anything she can do. Look now for this... any more skulls or wounds or now, infections. This is where the fun really begins, Celestia. Because you did what I was hoping you would do. Because as you scan the creature, its eyes lock on you. And you feel as if you're being scanned. And that's when you can feel its voice. It's not telepathy. It's, you can feel the core of your body. You can feel it in your heart. Your very soul. You feel this voice. You don't hear it. You feel it. And he says, Yes. Let's, let's deal. You have come to my home. Welcome. I am Plagueus. Plagueus. It's lovely to meet you. You look like you need some help. No. Am I soon? We will be in our new body. Yes. Soon. He looks at Cain as he says this. Cain shudders and drops in fear. Silas is looking at the uh, alien. What do you mean your new body? And how is it possible? So naive. Believe the lies you were told. The real cause of corporal wars was right in front of you. Leonidas and I. But he was not Leonidas anymore. He was I, my species. When our bodies reach the end, we can pass on our essence, our soul, into a new host, and we can begin anew. Leonidas was my new body. But unfortunately, things did not go as we planned. But now, Cain, you have reached. You are perfect. You will be a great host. Accept your destiny. You hey, will hey. Be... Cain isn't for sale. He already has two people in him. I don't think three can. I don't think he can handle a third one. Celestial. Everyone in a single episode so far, I have given them a moment when I tell them they're about to roll the single most important dice in the in all the entirety of this season. This is your moment. I just want you to roll me a d twenty, please. Okay. This is a very important role. I got a 19 on roll 20. So, okay, um, you just severely altered the story. Oh, yeah? In a very good way. Woo! You have resisted being knocked unconscious from the pure hatred and poison that's being leaked from his body. That's been poisoning me for yo. Do you think I'm intimidated by this shit? (laughs) You see Cain dropping, but you're able to stay up. You stay strong, Celestial. 
And I want you, I'm putting you on the spot here because you're about to do a massive wound against the Cyber Lich. What do you say to him? Take it away. An endoglastic species, you have to be the dumbest motherfucker I've ever met. You are trying to steal people's bodies instead of building your own. These people are not compatible with you at all. They're not compatible with your body, your technique, your your whatever alien technology you have. You really think human beings are going to stand around and just let you absorb them? And take over the body? We survived this long in hell. For hundreds of thousands of years. Constantly at war. Constantly with chemicals. Constantly with betrayal. What makes you think we're going to let a fucking alien take over? Now you're done. Veins just start to extend from his flesh as his body violently shakes in his life support capsule. You won't make it out. Eat a dick. Just, and we'll even say for even for good measure, as you prop Kane up and you start to run, you flip him the bird. As you tell him to eat a dick. <laughs> the walls, they violently shake. Metal descends. It falls in every step. But you're one step ahead. It's as if someone is guiding you. And you feel it. You feel three energies. You feel three souls around you. And you feel his three siblings that he betrayed. Yes. Try that step. Go left. Go right. Jump now. You feel it in your heart. This is what you must do. You follow the words. And you get out just in time. As a giant poison formed hand reaches up from the bottom of the ground. Clenching clothes. As the metal shuttle door slams shut. Oh man, my heart is racing. (laughs) I was racing too. (laughs) Oh. The only reason why you didn't do any more rolls, you rolled a 19. Oh (laughs) man. I I told you this was a very big moment. If you would have rolled anything lower than a 17, you first would have had... Oh my god. <laughs> you would have first had to roll to resist being knocked out, then to roll to try to lift up Kane, and then roll all those dodgings. And then finally dodge the giant hand. Oh, but. Mm, whew, let me collect myself because that was a big moment. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, but. Kane has tears falling from his face because he's just... Oh. I wasn't made to just be a fucking weapon. I was just meant to be some fucking shell for some fucking alien. You know what? That may have been the intention, but that's not what you have to be. (laughs) Celestial, can you hold me? Yeah, buddy. I got you. Kane just wraps himself and just starts bawling on your shoulder. That's all right. <laughs> ah. Listen, no one really chooses how people use us, but we can choose how we handle the situation. If you want to be more than whatever the hell that was, then that has to be your choice and you got to pursue it. She's patting him on the back. Kane, he wipes his eyes. I can see why Carla always thought of you as her sister. (sighs) 
because subconsciously, even when she was in control, I'd always see everything still. So I know everything that would happen. Uh, uh. We have to stop them. Yeah. We we will. And Somehow, some way, I know we will. And Celestial, I'll take that body. If that means we can keep their plan from happening. Yeah. And Celestial, will you make a promise just between the two of us? Sure. Kane reaches into his coat pocket and pulls out a small vial. The po- the color of this purple is so dark. And as you look closer, that's when you think you see a face just blending into the color and merges back into the... And he goes, this is from my Auntie Hemlock. This is her poison called the Devil's Spit. One drop will literally turn you to ash. If they get their goal and I'm no longer me, he grabs your hand and puts the vial in it. Celestial, I want you to be the one to end it. If if there was no other options and we exhausted every single resource to save you. Okay. And that's Kane one last time gives you a hug. And you can feel as if you can feel Carla as well wrapping up from behind you. So it's uh, just a big, nice group, three-way group hug. No. And Kane, and Kane just tells you, I'm scared. I'm really scared, Celestial. I... I'm just glad I have you guys. And I'm glad you... I have you guys. And you gave me a chance to... Gave me a chance to believe me. But I swear, and this is when Kane stands up, I will not let that thing that's down there have another chance. Because you heard him, Celestial. My dad caused all this. The Corporal Wars, everything. If he gets my body, God only knows what's going to happen. And I'm not going to let that happen. Kane's just doing a clenched fist. Uh, Celeste is going to hold his face. She said, hey, we aren't going to let that happen. You're not in this alone. You're right. It's just, it's scary to think that this is one of the first times I've never really felt by myself. And I'll... I promise I'll be more open to genuinely trying to trusting in you. And as a sign of good faith, I'm going to wake Carla up. He pushes his forehead and the process goat begins as the changing between Carla and Kane's body. Carla does like sleepy eyes and she's just Oh, Kane, I'm going to fucking... I can't believe he told Alistair and Trevor all of my secrets. He did what? Oh, yeah, he did the little annoying little brother thing of knowing that when their sister has a crush on somebody and goes and tells the crush. Oh, okay. When he wakes back up, I'm going to punch him in the dick for you. Carla's
Hello? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, we were just getting, it's just, Carla's just laughing her ass off. <laughs> this is literally a genuine moment between, you guys may not be blood related, but you are basically as close to sisters as, as this could be. Carla, you, there's no need to try to fill in Carla because, as I said, when Kane is not in control, he sees through Carla's eyes. So Carla was seeing everything through Kane's eyes. So she knows everything that happened. And she just says, so old ass alien crashes on our planet. Some race of aliens crash on our planet. They leave four of them behind. They make some clause that if we become stupid, they would wipe us out. And of course, one of them gets some kind of complex and murders the rest of them. Yeah, oh, great. Much. Oh, great. Um, and. Oh my god. I thought we were just I thought things were just going to be simple that we were just going to be doing things like you know, go go steal go go steal something or go get some supply go get some shipment. But here we yeah, are. Find some treasure. But here we are in the midst of some kind of massive fight for control of the city and some monster wants my bot wants Fucking my brother's body. Alien monster wants to roofie us and take our bodies. <sighs> what an asshole. Um You know what, Celestial? I know you're supposed to be going back to do the battle help with the battle of the bands, but you know what me and you need. We need a girls' night. So I'm going to teach you one of the nomad tricks I learned back in the day. She teaches you about the basics of chi control and how to manifest your chi and how to access the energy. As you're doing this, your body starts to feel hot and you still start to see like mist coming off your body because that's literally your sweat just evaporating from the heat that's coming off you. And that's when she tells you to take two, your your two hands, make and pull and hold out, extend your index and middle fingers, and make a crossing formation with them, and to say "clone." Oh. As you do this, you make a shadow clone, essentially a shadow clone. But the way this works is that it's comprised of your life energy. You feel really drained and tired, but nothing some good caffeine and coffee can't help. There is a perfect clone made of energy of you and of Carla. Carla looks at the two and goes, all right, you two know what to go do. Go make, the, go make them all believe that we're there. When, when we come back, you guys can dissipate. Me and Celestial need a girl's day. Need a girl's day. The two energy clones nod and they go run off to the distance. And Carla does like a hoop grab her on your arm and goes, come on, Celestial, it's time for a girl's day. Yeah, I'm down for that. What do you want your montage to look like? Oh, my God. It's this. You really think I'm not going to put you on the spot for this, Sam? I'm sorry, but yep. No, 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 I, I dig it. It's just Celeste, oh. she's overwalked. She just got whole, um... She just got her whole lab back. She gets to torment her big brother again. Oh yeah, she she needs a reward. She wants to go shopping, drinking, and clubbing. Oh, this is beautiful. Like literally you call you call up your big bro and we we just see as you two are dragging him to multiple stores and literally it's just a mountain of boxes and bags he's having to carry yep and this continues on as you guys go to this the most fanciest of restaurants enjoying great food and drinks and like i said this is this is the session that leads up to you to the battle of the bands so we get to see that moment of you guys going to the club and it's just magnificent you're enjoying the synth wave music you two are just in the hottest outfits. You guys are just looking like tens. Mm. And I mean every guy is hitting on you guys, but you just you just give them the you give them the little flirt and just keep on going. 
yeah. it's, just some, it's just something about the two of you that's so mysterious. And literally, there's you go to the anti grav club, and usually it's the most attention seeking people, the people who ha- get the most attention get to have their gravity field turned off in the club. Yeah, it's you two. And literally, spotlight comes on you guys from all directions as you're just dancing t- and with no gravity affected to you. That's awesome. Oh, shit. Uh, she's wearing a dress. <laughs> we'll say you. We'll say we'll that she got some uh, dress shorts on. That and the club makes sure to put it. Actually, digitizes a mosaic, a sensor bar, so people can't be looking up your guys' skirts. Okay, they ain't about that. Uh uh-uh. uh It's like that. That that's a good club to be in. <laughs> it's it's like look, we're about having fun, but we're not about to be letting people try to be perverts here. Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah. We respect you can be our patrons. on their own time. And your exactly. Own we don't get paid enough for that shit. It, today, even though you had that heart-wrenching, terrifying moment with encountering the being known as Plagueis, you have been infected with something. Not a virus. This is something that is complete. Just as how Plagueis is alien, what you've been infected with is hope. Aww. It's been a very long time since hope has been in Cyber City. <laughs> Alistair gave hope to the people of the down below. You're starting to feel that as well, Celestial, that even with all this stacked against you, you're actually seeing that maybe there is a better tomorrow for us. You will be able to save Cain and Carla. You feel confident. You stood up to your father. You put him in his fucking place. You told an alien to eat a dick. I did it for humanity. You are celestial. You know who you are. And you're ready to fucking show it to Cyber City. Oh, hell yeah. And it's with this we will end today's episode. with the nails done now.